Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you all have been enjoy enjoying this beautiful day. Had a chance to get out and spend some time with my dad and everything today to smell the flowers for a minute. And um, just a beautiful day indeed. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome to Bible study this evening. Um, we will continue our study of From the Cross to Pentecost. So before I get started, let's just bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. God, we just give you glory this evening for all that you have done and all that you are yet to do. Lord, we ask, oh God, as we um, begin this Bible study, Lord, that you would open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, to hear what it is that you said, as well as what you are saying unto us, O oh God, as we, Lord, explore your word, O oh God. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us those things that you would have us to know, God. And Lord, we don't want to just hear your word, but we want to be doers of your word. So even now, Lord, prepare our hearts to receive what it is that you are saying to us this day. Touch me, Lord, as I, Lord, lead this Bible study, Lord, in a special way, Lord, that it would bring forth revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I am going to share my screen if I can. All right, and so you should be able to see the title that we've been working through um, the last couple of weeks from the cross to Pentecost, where we are um, talking about um, what took place um, as well as what had transpired when Jesus had died until the until the coming of the Holy Spirit. And so we've been working on this, um, I believe the beginning at the week after um, Resurrection Sunday. And um, we explored different topics like, um, what did Jesus mean when he said, today you'll be with me in paradise? Where's paradise? Where was it then? Where is it now? Um, we talked about what, what it meant when Jesus said it's finished. You know, how, how Jesus was obedient unto death um, on the cross. We, we talked about the extreme measures that the um, Romans the Roman government did to try to ensure that Jesus would um, not get up from the grave and that he would not leave that tomb, how they had put a royal guard, which meant that there was not just one soldier or two soldiers, but there was a, a, a guard of soldiers, many soldiers. And they were there on a 24 hour watch to ensure that no one would tamper with the tomb um, and, and what they had perceived as being dead, dead, meaning that Jesus was not going to get up. They, they wanted to make sure that he would stay inside of that tomb. And I think about that lesson and everything because I had um, the privilege of being at a military um, service for um, a person who had passed away. And I remember how they had placed guards around the body. And it was a 24 hour watch until the next day with the service um, until that body was actually um, put in, into the ground. And what they would do is they had 15 to 30 minute intervals where they had two people, one on each side of the uh, of the casket. And then when they were going to be relieved, two more um, uh, military personnel would come forward, relieve those two, they would leave. And now these two would hold guard. So I, when, when Pastor was talking about this, that's what came to mind was how those guards and everything, they were on a 24 hour watch to ensure that nobody could tamper with the body. Or, um, or, or, or to do anything that was displeasant, or in, in our case with Jesus, to sit up there and even steal the body because they were worried about grave robbers as well. Um, and what we found is that, you know, even with their 24 hour guard, no power in the world could hold back the resurrection power that Jesus bestowed. Um, we know that Jesus is omnipotent. He has all power. Just as the Father had has all power, so does the Son of God has all power, same essence. And so not even the grave could stop the power of God that we see um, that Jesus had and how he illustrated it um, when he rose from the grave. 
And then, then we talked about the differences between unbelief and disbelief as we examine how the disciples, what their responses were to receiving the word that God had, that um, receiving the word that Jesus um, had risen from the, from the dead. And so today we're going to just kind of pick up and begin to study with, um, with this thought in mind. What are the benefits of the resurrection? The benefits of the resurrection. And we're going to be looking at a scripture in John, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's just kind of um, backtrack just for a minute, just to get a brief timeline so that um, we're all at the same kind of starting place. So Jesus, when he died, right, he died. Um, and then three days later, we um, we see that he rose again, right? Fulfilling scripture and he proved that he had power over the grave, that three days later is Resurrection Sunday morning. So some call it Easter, some call it Resurrection Sunday, but that is the day that Jesus get, got up. And so my question is, so how many days from Jesus's resurrection is there to Pentecost? And this is like, this is these are not hard questions. I just wanna get you guys Kind of thinking a little bit. How many days? I think it's 50. From the resu- That's right. There's 50 days from Jesus' resurrection, from Resurrection Sunday morning to Pentecost. How many days from Jesus' ascension to Pentecost? You got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody want to take a guess from the ascension to Pentecost? I can't talk. 40. Ms. Taylor said 40. Yes. 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 So. No, hold on. Hold on. Right, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's backwards. That's backwards. It's 10. Right. right? It's 10. So mm-hmm. when Jesus, okay. when Jesus was resu- when Jesus was resurrected, and he walked the face of the earth mm-hmm. for 40 days, right? And no. then he, he ascended, and then 10 days later was Pentecost. So we hear this number 40 a lot in the Bible. W- tell me some things that um that represent 40 in the Bible. When, when were times that we've seen 40? Jesus walked the earth from resurrection to ascension 40 days. What other time periods do we see that have 40 in it? So during the time of the flood, um, the ark was um, on the waters for 40 days. Well, it rained, sorry. It rained for 40 days and for 40 nights. Yes. And we know that the um, Israelites wandered in the uh, wilderness for 40 years. Mm-hmm. Those Any other the, instances? Yeah. Moses was Very on Mount Sinai. Say it again, Reggie. I said Moses was on Mount Sinai for 40 days. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he fasted during that time. Um, we also see that um, it was also 40 years in between each segment of Moses' life as well, from the time that he first fled Egypt to the time that he um, got revelation from God and from the time that he actually passed away. So, um, but then we also look at somebody like, uh, um, I always, always uh, mix these names up. We have uh, Elijah. He fasted also for 40 days. Um, we see Jesus is also tempted for 40 days in the fast led by to this by the spirit into the wilderness so the 40 is like this very significant number and we see the repeat of it multiple multiple times absolutely and so as we think about that 40 in those examples that were given what is the correlation or the 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 line that we see that if we had to pick themes as to what transpired during those 40 days, what kind of themes do we see? We typically say that 40 is the number of completion Mm -hmm. because it was like the 40 days of rain before it was over and God brought the new, you know, the newness of the world after uh, he washed away everything. Um, We also see, you know, Jesus beginning his ministry after that 
40 days of fasting, you know, um, so that was like a new beginning. So we always say that 40 is the number of completion because that's the end before you go into a new period. Okay, now just going deeper though, within that 40 days, what is the themes? Oh, so within the 40 days, you are really going through a trial, right? Um, you're going through, you know, some kind of challenge that you need to overcome. I'm thinking about the Israelites kind of wandering and, and all of that and thinking about the fact that, you know, no one in the family, they were in that ark you know, for those 40 days. So like you're going through something, the fasting, um, whether it's the, yeah, overcoming a trial. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So 40 does represent, it had, there is correlation with those 40s that we see throughout um, the Old Testament and the New Testament of it being a trial time or a testing time. Um, and, and then we also see that after those 40s, whether it was 40 days or 40 years, after those 40s, there was some type of a triumph. So during the 40 days, there was some type of testing or trial, and afterwards, there was some type of, of, of a triumph. And so I want you to think that, keep that in mind as we look at, you know, as we continue to look at this time period between the cross and Pentecost as to whether that still holds true um, uh, as we explore these scriptures and as we understand that time period. All right, so we're gonna um, talk about tonight, um, what are some of the benefits of the resurrection? We see what type of disciples, we, we I'm sorry, we see what the disciples saw in hindsight, where many times, you know, we judge them based upon, you know, what we understand today. Um, but they were actually going through it during that particular time. And sometimes, you know, when we look at things hindsight, it becomes 2020, where we can, you know, critique them and we can judge their responses as to why they did what they did and how they reacted to certain things. But they were actually in the moment when things had begun to occur. And so we really do need to keep that in mind and not be so critical to what they did. Because even in our lives, you know, if we could have done, if we can look back and do some things over again, we too would probably do things a lot different with the knowledge that we know now versus what we had when we were making certain decisions and reacting to certain things. And so, you know, even for us today, even as we look at this, at these texts and everything, we are conditioned. We're looking at things through our Western civilization eyes, where we don't have the same, we don't, we're not living in the same culture, and we don't have the same threats that they did during their time. And so, you know, we, we today can be Christians without being persecuted but they couldn't during that day. You know, we feel very comfortable today speaking truth to power. You know, they could not do things like that. We we protest today, you know, on, on, on things that are happening in our, our, our culture, in our society. We, we're very quick to sit up there and jump on, you know, um, uh, issues of racism, Black Lives Matter, women's rights, you know, even um, many, there are many today, even, even with the LGBTQ rights and things like that and policing, we're, you know, we're, we're very vocal about, and we're very convicted about the, about, you know, um, about our opinions, about our views, about speaking, speaking out and things like that. But back then, if you did anything that was countercultural, you know, it, the, spoke against the Roman government and see what, what would happen to you, you'd be killed. You know, if you start protesting or, you know, um, claim even with the Jews and everything, saying just the mere fact that, you know, um, Jesus was saying that he is the son of God, you know, that was reason to kill. It, it did, you know, kill Jesus, you know. And he did, he was persecuted in the, through the Roman government because of this. And so we have to realize, you know, that they weren't given the same type of privileges um, that we are able to um, experience today. 
And so it didn't matter. I'm, I, I'm still thinking about Jesus, you know, when he, um, when he died on the cross and, and, and everything that he did, he proved himself, even though nobody wanted to hear what he had to say. He proved himself in the healings. He proved himself as he taught, as he delivered folks, as he performed miracles, even in the sight of those who ended up persecuting him. And so, you know, um, we have to be very careful when we look at when we look at these texts, you know, to and 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 see the different hesitancies and the fears that the disciples were dealing with as they were going through. All right, so let's take a look at this text here, John chapter twenty beginning at verse 19, John, and I'm reading from the NSRV version. And what we want to do as I, as I read through this, I want you to um, look at um, what, what jumps out to you as a benefit, as benefits of the resurrection as it's revealed in this text, okay? So John 20, beginning at verse 19, it says, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Does anything pop out to you in, re in regards to a benefit of the resurrection? You restored peace to them. Peace. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this is Carol. Okay. It. Um, mm -hmm. It proved his power over death. It, it proved his deity. So we have a benefit of knowing that, you know, Jesus is God. He is Lord. Okay. And that he triumphed over evil. Okay. And we can as well triumph over evil be, uh, with the power of God in us and because of his resurrection. Okay. So that's a benefit of knowing uh uh, understanding the resurrection of of, of Christ, um, you know that that um, we have victory, that we're yeah, more than conquerors, me. that we're more than conquerors, and the forgiveness for our sins. Mm -hmm. And we also, I think you added that last presence. verse in there too. I'm sorry. Also, that his his presence abides with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let, let, let's take a, a, a deeper look. And we're gonna talk about several of the points that you just raised. Okay, so as I read this, one of the first benefits that I see is that Jesus dispels the fear that the disciples were experiencing. And so what we see is that, you know, even during the course of, of um, his ministry, um, here on earth, numerous times in the gospel, Jesus deals with their fears and tells them, fear not, you know, letting them know that they don't have to be afraid. And so um, when I look at this and I see how, you know, it, it says here how they were locked in that room and they, that, that how they feared the Jews. Fear, fear has a way of subduing our faith where we many times yield to fear instead of moving forward in faith. And fear, fear is a reaction to our, to our body and our soulish realm. You know, we fear because of what we feel. We fear because of what we see or what we think, or sometimes even what we perceive, you know, may happen um, because of whatever it is that we see or, 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 or whatever is going on. And now faith, on the other, other hand of that, faith is an intentional spiritual conviction where we choose to believe God and trust what he says in his written word, as well as in the spoken word, in his logos, as well as in his rhema. 
And the disciples here, they were, we can clearly see that they were afraid. You know, why? Because we see that they had locked themselves in a room when Jesus had come and stood before them. Um, if we, we, I put two scriptures here. Second Timothy 1, 7 says that um, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice. And this is the RSV version. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it says in the New King James Version, which is one that we, we, we uh, tend to repeat. But it says, um, God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. That means that we can discipline ourselves because God, Christ is in us so that we don't have to fear. We have to condition our minds not to fear, but to trust God and to have faith. In the New King James Version, it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. You know, these are the things that God gives us. However, for some reason, our flesh is conditioned to react. And many times it reacts faster than our faith does. How many of you have ever gotten bad news from a doctor and the first thing you do, you're afraid? You know, and it, it happens and it, it, there's nothing wrong. We just have to understand that this does happen happened uh, to us. And then we see here also that first John, I love this scripture. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We are in the midst of being perfected. We are not perfect yet. So we can let ourselves off of, off, you know, off of, of, of the dangling ha hanger and everything else that we have to be perfect. We, we will find situations where we fear just like these disciples fear. But Jesus didn't want them to be afraid. He didn't come um, and give his life so that we would have to live in fear. And so with him revealing himself to them um, that what he said he would do and had done, and here is he in the flesh who promised that a new kingdom was coming and is now standing in front of them in his resurrected body. So everything that Jesus said he was going to do, he did. You know, even though, you know, they didn't understand it. And for three whole days, they did not see Jesus. They did not know what was happening. They were afraid and everything else. Now here he is live in the flesh to show them, hey, everything that I told you was spot on. Everything I said, you can believe, you can take it to the bank, you can cash that check. Here I am. You know, you don't need to be afraid. Everything I promised you, not only unto my death, not only unto my resurrection, but also to my new kingdom coming, it shall happen. I'll pause there for a moment. Questions, comments? All right. Let's move on. What other benefits? Reggie, you you um you you tapped on this one. Um, another um, benefit to the resurrection is it brings peace. He said to them, "Peace be with you." He knew that they were stressing. You know, it, it was a lot that they had 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 seen, a lot that they had gone through, um, watching all that had transpired. Their anxiety levels were probably at an all time high. They were dealing with a lot. You know, some of them had heard what had transpired that morning. You know that Jesus had rose from the grave. Yet some of them were still. Um, you know, some of them were eyewitnesses, but not all of them were. And so they're still getting it secondhand. Hey, Jesus rose from the grave. He's not here. He is risen. All of the things that transpired, you know, is it so? Is it not so? What's going to happen to us now that Jesus is alive? You know, are they going to come after us, asking us questions and everything else? And so when Jesus came into that room, he says to them, peace be with you. 
And so this is another benefit of the resurrection is that it does bring peace. We're able to experience a newness of life um, and a transformed mind. God, you know, our mind is now transformed because again, what he said he was gonna do, he did it. And as the disciples saw it, you know, God, you, Lord, you're, you're right here. You're right here next to me. You're right by my side. You have, you have proven yourself. It's like when, you know, having your big brother over, you, over, you know, next to you. Now, all of a sudden, I feel comfortable. I'm not worried about what's around me because my, my brother's got my back. You know, um, that kind of thing. He's here again with them. The Bible tells us he's our refuge and our strength. He's a very present help in time of trouble. And yes, did he not show himself that he was there and he brought peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I don't give it to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts um, be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Peace be with you. And so that is another benefit of the resurrection. All right. Let's see, we're going to continue on. And after that is this, yes. he showed them his hands. You know I'm something, sorry? Crystal, there, the, yeah, there's, there is so many benefits from the resurrection, our, our salvation. We wouldn't have salvation if he didn't rise again. It, you know, there's just so many. Um, um, you know, we would still be in our sins and, you know, and it, 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 we wouldn't have the faith, you know, uh, he came, he gave us the, he gave us faith to believe in him. So th there's just, I don't know. There's just so many, there's, there's, he sent the Holy spirit. We wouldn't have the Holy spirit if he didn't rise again. Right. Uh, yep. I mean, it's just so, so, you know, so much as the scriptures talk about and, and Corinthians and Romans, if it wasn't for the fact that Jesus resurrected the benefits that we have we have the benefit of being saved from our sins we have the a benefit of having the holy spirit in us um there's just so much that he is he has um uh, because of his resurrection that we benefit from you, you you know what i'm saying right there there is you know but the benefit there but there are i should say commas you know, there's benefits to his death. There's benefits to his resurrection. There's mm -hmm. benefits to Pentecost, you know? Right. And that's what we're trying to identify. It's like, what are the benefits right here, right now with the right resurrection? Mm -hmm. With right, the resurrection. Right. Yep, yep. Because I have a feeling that after we finish this study, Pastor's going to go on to Pentecost and, and what happens after that. But I, I'll save that for if and when he touches on those points and everything. Okay. Hmm. Yes, yes. So we, we, what we're exploring here is the benefits um, through this particular text of the, of the benefits of resurrection. Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. And so here we are, you know, after he said, peace be with you, he, he then said, he then, um, he then, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. Because why do you think he, he showed them that? What was the significance of that? He needed to what give tangible evidence that it was actually him. Yeah. Yeah. Because remember also during this, this day and time, there was a lot of wannabes, you know, claiming that they were the Christ and everything else. And a lot of wannabes that would, would soon come after this as well, you know, so they did, he wanted to ensure that, ensure to them that, you know, it wasn't a ghost, mm. you know, or they were having some type of hallucination. You know, because they were stressed and everything else. So he showed them, here's here's my scars. You know, that's where they, they put the nails in my hands and in my feet. You know, um, come and see, touch it. You know, it's, it, it's really me. I am he, I, I'm Jesus. There's nothing like an eyewitness account, right? I'm speaking. It, it, yeah, it, it, speak. it's something. I'm not speaking. I'm sorry. So I it, it's nothing like an eyewitness account. I gotta I want to share this story with you because it's it, it has 
bothered me for the last two days. Um, me and my son, Mark, we went up to South Mountain Reservation. And, you know, they have this huge lake and everything over there that you can walk around and everything else. You know, we're out there getting some fresh air, sharing some conversation. And I was telling him, because I had gone up there a couple of times before, and I was like, oh, you're going to see lions and tigers and bears, oh my, and all of this, because it's right next to the zoo. And you see turtles and all this other stuff. So he was excited to go on a walk with me. So we're over there and everything. He wants me to start pointing out all of these things that I told him he'd see. And so, you know, we're walking on the path and there's the, the, the lake, um, the, the grassy area right before the, the lake and everything. And then there's the lake. And so we're looking in the water for the turtles because we had not yet gotten to the area where all of the turtles are. And so everything that we see, he's asking me, oh, is that a turtle? Is that a turtle? I'm like, no, that's one of the water spigots that throws the water up. No, that's a log, da, 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 da. And so we get to this one area and everything. And I'm looking and I'm like, that it looked to me like it was a black hose that was there, you know? And I'm like, funny place for a hose, you know, I see pipes, I see sticks and everything else. And so I'm standing on the path and I'm looking at the, at the water bank and everything where it is and I'm staring at it. And I noticed two eyes were staring back at me and come to find out it was not a hose. It was a black snake. And it was about this, can you see my, this, that, and it would have to be about three feet long. And it was wrapped around three or four times in a coil staring at me. And I freaked out. I started, I started running. I started telling my kids, don't go over there. It's a snake. It's a snake. It's a snake. And of course he wants to be nosy. Now he walks over and he's looking at it. I'm like, they jump, get away from it and everything else. So, you know, I'm all freaked out. We're halfway around the track. So we can, we have to finish it to get back. Cause I'm ready to go home now. I'm done. But everybody I see walking past, I'm telling them, be careful. There's a snake up there. There's a snake up there. Walk your dog on the other side. Some people were turning around. Some were curious and wanted to see. But there was nothing like an eyewitness to tell you of what had transpired. And so when I think about what I went through, you know, and how energized I was about it. Can you imagine what these disciples, you know, how energized and excited they were about, you know, telling what they had seen, you know, their eyewitness account. I saw Jesus. I really did. He got up from the grave, just like he said, you know, and, 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 and even in hearing that type of, you know, eyewitness account, it causes us to react. You know, there's going to be some kind of conviction in us. Either we're going to believe it or we're not going to believe it. But we're going to we're going to sit up there and have some type of reaction to what was being said to us. Right. And so, you know, here it is. Jesus is confirming what he said, and he was doing it for a reason. He had to give them back that confidence that they had when they had walked with him. Um, you know, it was, it's easy to have confidence when somebody is standing right there next to you, but when they go away and then there's no evidence that you have seen, you know, he died. You know, there's no evidence that, that um, he, would, he would actually be resurrected. You know, that can mess with your confidence in the story that you're telling. But here it is now, he showed himself. And so I put on here also 1 Corinthians 15, as Paul states it, and, and Paul, another eyewitness to, you know, the resurrected Christ, where he saw him on the road to Damascus, he says, um, for I have handed on to you as of first importance, what I in turn have received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to, get this, more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time. Most of them are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. Wow. 
And now, now you have all of these accounts going on. I seen Jesus. I seen him too. I seen him too. I seen him too. Jesus said what he was going to do. He did it and he proved himself um, to them by revealing himself, not just to the disciples, but to many, many, many more. You know, the Bible isn't the only place in which we find, you know, the account of Jesus, you know, that he actually um, lived, that he died and that he rose again. It is actually in many other historical books as well. You know, the Bible for us, though, is, is, is God revealing God's self to to us and showing us how to how how a, a, a um, sinful people can be redeemed and how the love of God is poured out. But there is also other accounts, you know, that 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 also you know um, um, that also confirm that yes, Jesus did did was here. He did die and he did rise again. And I'll open it up. Any questions? Any comments? Just hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm looking at the time. I got to move a little bit quicker. I still have two or three more slides I want to present to you. All right. So now, then the disciples, they rejoice. And I think, Sister Carol, you hit on this one. You know, how it, it has given us a renewed hope. You know, the resurrection has given us hope. If God, if he did it to, if he did it for himself and he promises to us, wow, we will live again. Though we oh, die, and yet we shall live. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> yes. And so first Peter one in 21 says through him, you have come to trust in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so and that your faith and hope are set in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, yes, there is restored, renewed hope. Amen. All right. And so here we are. We just to to where we how, where how far we've gotten so far, we we see that through this text, Jesus, when he came and revealed himself to the disciples, he dispels their fear. He brings peace. He confirmed his work word and gave confidence. He also brought renewed hope. And then we get to these last verses. Jesus said to them again, "Peace be with you." He repeated himself. Wow. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Uh-oh. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Wait a minute. The Holy Spirit was given be to them before Pentecost? And so... I pause there for a second because truth be told, the Holy Spirit has been, you know, in action all throughout the Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation. And even in the Old Testament, we see instances where the Holy Spirit has come upon certain individuals to do certain things. You know, um, he came upon, um, be Basilel in Exodus to help create the um, all that needed to be done for the temp for the tabernacle, giving him wisdom and ability to do the artistic work that was necessary. We see how the Holy Spirit had come upon Moses, you know, and then unto this the seventy elders, and then unto Joshua. We see in the book of Judges, you know, the Spirit had come upon uh, Gideon. Um, and I think it was Othniel to do a to do perform a certain function that God needed done. We see even the spirit fall upon a donkey, you know, Baal. I mean, uh, Balaam, um, you know, to speak words of truth and everything, um, God's word to 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 um, the, the 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 prophet and everything there. But we see, you know, in the Old Testament, it was not. Um, just a one-time occurrence that it happened. It happened through all of the Old Testament at certain times, 
for God to reveal God's self for a, a specific function. And so here we do, we see it again as, you know, what, what is it that, that, um, that he was, that, that why did Jesus feel necessary to breathe on them for them to receive the Holy Spirit? And it was power for them to, to do his will during that, 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 that phase between the ascension to Pentecost, where they would permanently receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So that confidence that was given to them so that they can go out, that peace that was given to them, not dispel, um, dispelling the fears and everything and the renewed hope, he was sealing that in them so that when he ascended and wasn't there for the 10 day period, you know, until the receiving of the Holy Spirit, that they would carry on and be equipped to do that in which was necessary for them to do, to go in that upper room, to receive then the, the permanent indwelling of the Holy Spirit, to preach the good news. You know, it was necessary for them. And it was also, it also served as a precursor for them to understand what was soon to take place. I want you to know even beforehand that this is something that will also that that will happen to you here. You know, understand it, feel it now, know it now. Wow. That's not the first time either that he has has you know shown and shown you know what he was yet to do. Peter had some of those experiences, you know, when he um, was on the mountain and everything and he saw things that no one else had seen, you know, wow, he was showing, he was preparing him, you know, that um, to, to understand who Jesus the Christ really is. You are the Christ. And so this thing, when, when, when they were talking about, you know, in, in John, I think it was John 14 through 17 about the Holy Spirit, you will receive the Holy Spirit. I have another that's coming. Well, guess what? Taste, taste and see just a little bit about what it is that I'm ready to give you as a permanent indwelling. And I'm going to stop there because we're out of time. But these are the things that um, the ben some of the benefits as revealed to us in this text um, as to um, the benefits of the resurrection. All right, any questions, any comments? And I'm well, trying to close. My I got a bunch of them, but it would take too long. <laughs> we'd be here all night all the more reason to come back to it um <laughs> yes wonderful wonderful good teaching thank you thank hopefully you hopefully i'll give it some food for thought for the next couple of weeks but continue to study that thing out i tell mm. you i didn't realize how much meat was just in those couple of verses until mm. i started to dissect it apart and really study it for what it was amen Mm. Right. Study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right. Let's just bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, of how you just reveal yourself through your word, God. How you, Lord, continue to speak to us, Lord Jesus, giving us that renewed hope, strengthening our faith in you, giving us confidence and holy boldness, hallelujah, transforming our mind, hallelujah. We just give you praise, oh God. We ask, oh God, as we continue to study your word, God, continue to reveal yourself to us. Um, as to who we are and who we are in you and that in which you are calling and desiring us to do. We love you, Father. Bless us, God, as we leave this time this the, in, in this space, oh God. Bless us as we slumber and we sleep tonight. Lord, wake us up in the morning, oh God, where we can continue to praise you, to worship you, and to serve you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Amen. 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 God bless you.